Hello everyone. Today the topic is a Skywater tutorial. So I'm just starting up the planning for the next year's course. This is Advanced Integrated Circuits that I'm running at NTNU. And today I'm going to go walk you through the tutorial that I've uploaded for this year. Or actually, next year. So let's dive straight in. Actually, and let's go like this. So you can actually see what's going on. So, I'll put the uh, link uh, in the description below, but you can find the tutorial at Analogicus. This might be a too small to see. Uh, AIC 2025. And there you will find a tutorial. Now, some of the tutorial actually goes through how do you install the tools. Um, that we're not going to really cover today. We're going to focus on the actual design part. But... I've tried to descri <laughs> describe uh, the best I can how to install the tools because you'll need um, Magic, you'll need NGSpice, you need NetGen, and you need XGen. So you can run these on both Windows and on Mac. Actually, in Windows, you're going to run it in uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux. So you'll install Ubuntu on your Windows machine. But on a Mac, you can run it natively. One of the things for first you have to do is you have to have a GitHub account for all the MyScripts and stuff to work. So if you haven't set that up, go to GitHub, set up that, add your public key so you can actually check out or clone repositories with a SSH-based uh, clone. You'll also need ASICs. So that part we're going to do. Now, I have a directory here which it doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, if you don't know where it is, uh, don't know where to put this, then you can put it in the pro directory, for example, in your home directory. But let me clone ASEX. So ASEX is a collection of IPs and scripts that I use in order to sort of wrap around the Skywater and make it as easy as I can for my students to actually do stuff. So, okay, there it's uh, cloned. So then I have ASEX here. Okay. Now you also need to set up a few var environmental variables. So where the tools are located and so on. And if you run Python 3.12, then you also need to install a virtual environment. And this section goes through how to do that. Now I'm not gonna actually do the in tool install, but what I've done is in the tests, um, directory here, there is a makefile. Now, if you don't know what a makefile is, it is basically a big file that writes down how to do commands. So for example, if we go to the tutorial here, it says make requirements. Okay, so in this file called the makefile, there will be a section called requirements. And this will show you what it actually does. So if you're on a Mac, it runs brew install. So you need brew installed if you don't have that. Else it'll update um, apt, assuming <laughs> you're running Linux. And then depending on the version of Linux, it'll, it'll try to install libraries. This section might fail if you're running in a different version than 2204 or 2404, but you can figure it out. And it has sort of the other stuff. So make TT, that is down here somewhere, I guess. Let's see, TT. Right, so that installed Tickle and TK. And then EDA Compile installs Magic, XCAM, and so on. So if any of these commands fails, you actually have to figure out what's going on. Uh, there's no point in continuing if any one of them gives an error. The final one, which is installing the PDK, that takes a lot of disk space around, well, 40 gigs or something. Now, one of the things I've written on top of, or not on top of, but in order to orchestrate which IPs that you need for a certain design, I've written a small configuration toolbox in Python called CICConf. So that one we need to install. So if I do the git checkout main, you get the latest and greatest. Let's just pull that and let's install it. So we need to do Python pip 
install editable local. So I've actually got CIC conf installed already, but now it'll switch it to this uh, local directory. That means that if it fails for some reason, you could actually modify it. And now if I do CIC conf, Oh, I got a few warnings. Well, don't worry about those. <laughs> I'll fix those. That's that's Python 3.12 that is complaining about some of the regex inside CIC conf. Anyway, uh, you can see some of the commands down here. And let's go back to the IP directory and run an update. Now, in the IP directory, there will be a file called CIC conf. Actually, let's have a look at that while this is uh, doing stuff. So IP config. Right, so <clears throat> most of this um, CIC conf file is really links to other IPs. It has some of the tools that I'm using like CIC conf, CIC sim, CIC Spy, <laughs> and CIC Creator, and CIC Pi. Don't worry about most of those, you're not gonna use them. And it's mostly for Misa, but it has this sort of wraparound for the technologies. So I've been using the Skywater 130B and the Skywater 130A. If you don't know what you should use, then use the Skywater 130A because that's the one that you can actually tape out on tiny tape out. Actually, let's make this window slightly bigger because it keeps... Uh... Oh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. And in addition to that, it has quite a few IPs. There's a PLL in there, there's some transistor libraries, there's an ADC. That's the one I taped out on uh, Tiny Tape Out, I guess, well, in April 2024. It has a schematic of a bias source. It has actually some of the designs from last year, of course. So an op amp, uh, this is my attempt at the temperature sensor. It's not complete, it's schematic only. Now, one of the groups that um, made a design last year of the temperature sensor, they actually got pretty close to completion. Uh, it's not uh, LVS okay yet, but uh, it could be. And then for this year, uh, it's the Janeway project. Oh, there's a missing, like that. Now, Currently, there are three things in January. There's a transistor library, and uh, I've started another temperature sensor. I'm not gonna complete this one, but it's mostly to, for me to figure out how do I actually use Verilog on top for designs. But let's get back to the tutorial. The point here is to run through the tutorial. Okay, so we need CIC sim. That might have been installed already when we cloned. But uh, let's just uh, do it to make sure. And you also need to set your ng-spice settings. So ng-spice will look for a file called spice in it. So ng-spice is a spice similar. So if I do cat and I do spice in it, then you can see I'm running the same options as we have here, I think. Let's just look through them. Yeah, it looks the same. Yeah, good, okay. So what we wanna do now is check that the tools have been installed. So I need to go to Sunsar uh, work, and then I can launch Magic. We can have a look at that. So if these two commands don't work for you, then you should not continue. Then you need to figure out how to get the, stalls in the <laughs> how to get the tools installed, or you can use one of the Docker instances that uh, are provided by, uh, well, people around the internet. So here we can see my successive approximation ADC. Let's go a bit wider, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. So here we have uh, the bootstrap switch, we have the CDAC, and we have the digital logic and the comparator. Okay, so that works. Great, then I'll exit magic. And let's just check that uh, the schematic works also. Okay, yes, it does. Then we are ready to start the tutorial. Now, I'm already in the IP directory. There we go. Okay. So what we wanna do now is to create a new IP. 
So I've actually made sort of a, a template for how I believe that IPs should look like. Uh, as a student of mine, you don't have a choice. This is how you have to do it. Because, well, the reason I'm forcing you to choose a particular structure is that you don't have the experience yet <laughs> that I believe that you should be allowed to choose the structure. You may choose a good one, most likely you will not choose a good one. And the reason for that is simply because you haven't done it before. But let's look at what this uh, file does. So we need to go to the IP templates and it'll create a number of directories. It'll create a number of files. And some of these files will be like the config YAML that will include the uh, transistor libraries, for example. And it'll also set up something called the GitHub workflows. Now, these are workflows that runs on GitHub in order to do, do layout versus schematic, to do de uh, design rule checks, to do GDS checks, uh, sorry, to stream out the GDS and simulation and create the documentation and so on. So most of these files are sort of helper files that you will need that I know you're going to need. So I'll, I'll create them for you. <laughs> and all you need to do is sort of fill stuff in. So if you're a bit paranoid, have a look through the file so you make sure that you understand what's happening. And then we can go here and we want to type CIC conf uh, new IP X. So this will create a IP called Janeway uh, underscore X underscore sky 130A. And if we go in the config YAML, you will see that uh, it's choosing this IP template. It's using the project name Janeway and the technology sky 130A. Okay. So let's see, is it there? Yes, it is. Here's the uh, new IP. So as I mentioned, uh, if we go into that directory, directory, let's do tree. And there we go. Now you won't see the GitHub workflows. Let's go into that. No, not Git. GitHub uh, workflows. Okay, so in this workflow thing, there's something called a docs, there's the DRC YAML, there's the GDS YAML, LVS YAML, simulation YAML. We'll get to those towards the end of the tutorial. So let's skip that for now. There's gonna be a lot of configuration files like the git ignore. It has a readme file that you need to edit and a config file uh, that has the IPs that we're using and it has sort of the, my small PDK, which has borders and a few transistors and stuff and the technology library and the uh, standard transistors that I'd like to use. So in the design directory, let's go into that actually, and let's do tree. <clears throat> so here you see the design directory. So the way I've organized, chosen to organize my files is there will be the um, library itself. So library is a directory it's the collection of cells, like schematic cells, uh, or layouts for that matter. And then we have the actual, call it the cell, the uh, design, one schematic. And here we already have a schematic view, and there's a markdown view for documentation. The other libraries here, you can see are symbolic links to the other transistor libraries. And the way I want you to organize it is you will have the name for the cell. That's exactly the same between the schematic, the symbol, the, the magic uh, file, and the documentation. Now, when it comes to simulations, they will be stored in the sim directory. So here we can do make cell, cell Janeway X, and that will create the uh, Oh, lots of warnings because I'm running Python 3.12. Yeah, and then it complains about all my regex without the right escape, escape sequence. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but <clears throat> this will create a simulation directory for our Janeway cell. And inside that, I've already then created, oh, actually, alas, 
already created a few files and this sort of is a templates for uh, how I choose to run my simulations. I will go through the files and details. Right now I just want to give you a slight overview of the different directories. Okay, so when it comes to where we're starting the programs, uh, like XGAM and Magic, it, it matters a whole lot where you start them from because Magic and XGAM are looking for a setup file. So XGAM will search for the file called XGAMRC and we can look inside that. Uh, XGAMRC and that has a link to the technology XMRC, where I've sort of set up the default stuff and it also has the library path for where it expects to find the cells. Same for magic. It has the library. Here actually we can see that it doesn't have the two other libraries. So let's add those. Oh, let's see, IP, we want Janeway, I want X, work, uh, magic RC. Let me just add the libraries that are called. Maybe I should, should slow down a bit. Huh? I guess you can put the video on half speed or something if it's too fast. <laughs> Is that possible? I don't know. Uh, let me add those two libraries so they show up in magic. Where was I? Yes. Okay, so that's sort of a, a rough um, file setup. Now, one of the first things that we want to do before we start editing too much is actually to add a GitHub repo. Because when we do that, then we can sort of uh, use version control on our design. So let me add Janeway X Sky 130A example. Uh, example Skywater. And let me create that repository. And then I probably need to commit. Yeah. Added um, sim files. And then we want to do the commands from GitHub here to actually push to GitHub. And now if I refresh, actually maybe the GitHub part's a bit too small, like that's maybe, maybe better. Now you can see my files up here. And we'll do one thing is we'll go to the settings. And right away, let's enable pages, deploy from branch. We want the GitHub actions. And if I'm gonna now go to actions, you will see that already my <laughs> the workflows on GitHub's, uh, GitHub is doing something. And what it's trying to do is, for example, here it's trying to generate GDS. So I haven't really changed any files yet. But it's still trying to run. Um, here it's pulling down a Docker image. And now it's starting the Docker image. It is installing some Python tools. It will try to check out what's in the config YAML, and then it'll try to generate a GDS, so a stream file, the sort of layout file that we send to the Foundry based on the top cell design. So the information that it's using for those runs is in the info YAML file. So in here we have the library, library name, we have the cell name, we have, well, the author, that's me. And tagline, we want uh, Skywater, 130 nanometer tutorial. And email, well, I guess my email is so easy to find that I can just add it here. <laughs> Don't always expect a response, but I usually try to respond to email. And I can set up my URL. This is my GitHub URL. And let's also make the documentation. Let's remove that one. So we want to make documentation for the, what did we call it? It was Janeway EX Sky 130A. And we want documentation for the cell that is called Janeway EX. Yes, okay. 
And for the simulation, we want that to run on... Well, let's look at that later. Okay. So, all these GitHub actions, they will run every time you commit. So, it might be a good idea if you're going to commit a lot to create a branch. So, we can do that by git branch develop, for example. <clears throat> and we can check which branch I'm on now. And git checkout develop. And we can commit to update the YAML file. I'll update the info. And if I now push, okay, yeah, I need to set the upstream. If I now push it, push it, then it is not going to rerun the actions because the actions only run on the um, main branch. So if I click actions here, nothing's going to happen now. What I want to show you before we leave this is that already, as I said, it has run these actions and most of them are red. Now, if you're a student of mine and you're going to do the course next year, these uh, runs are going to count towards your grade. So let's see if they pop up here. So right now it says no status. <clears throat> I think if we go to the GitHub page, which should already be, be there. If I click there, use my GitHub URL, save changes, and press this button. No, okay, so the documentation failed. Let's see what... Uh, huh. Why doesn't that work? Ah, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot the um, the info file was wrong. That's one we fixed right now. So let me show how you can fix that. Uh, let's do a pull request towards the main branch because I updated the info, and we can then merge. Yes, merge pull request, yes. Confirm merge, yes. Okay, and we let that build in the background and we can see uh, the updated um, tutorial. So let's go back to the tutorial page. <clears throat> so what we wanna do here is edit the readme file first. Okay, let's go to readme. <clears throat> and who, well, that's me. Uh, it's a Skywater. On 30 nanometer tutorial, uh, how, well, make stuff. <laughs> and it has a few other things. Let's not worry about that. But you want to have a look at the readme file and you want to update it. So <clears throat> as you may already have discovered, I'm a big user of something called Make. Make is a build system that was made back in way back when in order to compile programs. So anytime you type Make, it will look for a file called makefile in this directory. And that makefile has the command commands to do stuff. Now, this particular makefile in the work folder, that will be the one that you use to run the commands locally, like GDS and so on. So I, I encourage you to have a look at the makefile, try to understand how it uh, works. Uh, let me start X again, and let's actually start drawing a design. So what we want to do is we want to make a current mirror. So I want to, let's see, actually, let's go full screen here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is change the port number. We want to do IBPS 5 mark ramp. Like that, because I'm going to have 5 mark ramps coming in. And I'm going to say this is IBNS, 5 microamp. No, that's 20 microamp. So it's going to be 20 microamp coming out of this current mirror. And let's zoom in. And let's change this to an output port. So this is the IPIN symbol. We can uh, change it to the open. And it becomes like this. Okay, let's see. What else did I say in the tutorial? 
Ah, here there's a typo. It should be five microamps. Let's see, add transistors. Okay, then I want to do Shift I, and I'm going to go Home, and I want to go to Design, and I want to pick ATR. So this is my transistor library. So <clears throat> you can see that these. Well, you maybe you can't see it. It's so small. But these uh, these transistors have specific names. Uh, they sort of end with NCH and PCH. That's of course PMOS and NMOS. And then you'll have 4C, 1F2. What that means is the 4 refers to the number of contacts on the uh, drain and source, roughly. So it tells you something about the width. And then 1F2 tells you something about the length. So it's 1.2 times the minimum length, roughly. Now, for a current mirror, we usually want to place the current mirror into strong inversion. So we kind of want long gate length. So I'm going to pick the one called uh, 5F0, which gives me a relatively long gate, gate length. And let's copy that. And let's wire. To do wires in the XCAM, you just uh, do W. And you can sort of uh, route the bulks like that. And we'll route the gates. And then, so every time I'm changing corner now, I'm pressing W. And we need our ground, because we want the ground to be connected to the source and box. Okay, so now I have my current mirror. Let's go back and see if there was more I should do. Right, so let's change the name of this to XI. So my input transistor, and this is to XO, and we want to do 3 to 0. So I want to have four of those. Oh, here is also a typo. It should be <laughs> 3. Actually, let me just fix that while we're at it. Uh, no, this is going to be AC 2025. And it's lectures. LR is the tools, and uh, the first mistake was 4U, that should be 5U, and then the 4 to 0 should be 3 to 0. Okay. And we want to create 4 transistors, not 5. Okay. Now, W root of wires, zoom, blah, blah, blah. Save the schematic, yeah, that's important. Press the save button, okay? What do we do now? Now we want a netlist, okay? Then I go back to my terminal, and I do make uh, XCH. Cell, Janeway, the example. Okay, so now we have a spice file. There should be a file called here, Janeway XSpice, and let's open that in Emacs, so we can get some color coding. Work. XCAM and SPICE. Okay, so here we can see a couple of things. We have our XI transistor, and we have our four other transistors. Now, these both refer to a library cell that is from the, uh, well, I guess it doesn't show up here, but it's from the ATR analog transistor library. And here we'll find the actual 1.8 volt transistor. Okay. So what we want to do now is run a typical simulation. So I'll go to the simulation directory, Janeway example, let's clear the screen. And yeah, we've actually made the simulation directory already, so I don't need to do that again. And you can see now that there are a bunch of files in there. There's another make file, again, for running make and then some commands. There is a YAML file that does the setup for uh, something called CIC sim or 6 sim, as my students sometimes call it, that orchestrates uh, the simulations running in NDSpice. And then we have a YAML file for uh, how to collate the transistor, or not transistor, but the output parameters from simulations. We have a measurement file that has what should be done after simulation, so what type of parameters do we want to extract? average current, whatever. 
There's a Python script that can be run optionally after the simulation has completed, and there's the actual test bench, the tran.spy, and there's a tran.yaml. We'll look at the details of these. But actually, without doing anything, it should be possible to do make typical here, and it should run a simulation of that file, although it won't really do much because we haven't said how it's going to use the different parts or how it's going to actually uh, put current into this uh, file. But there is a default test bench in this simulation folder. So let's modify that. Let's add a current. And again, here you can see I have a typo. Let's see. Uh, so we want to add this current to the input. Let's do that here. And let's remove the VDD. Now, it has a reference to the uh, device on the test. So if we open the extract file, it can we can see that it's already instantiated our current bear. Now, I usually use this extract file, so that's sort of an automatically generated file, because sometimes if I don't do that, then the ports are not correct. Uh, port, or, port order may change when you add new ports, and that's a quite tricky thing to debug. Let's see, I'm just going to fix that uh, for you. Let's, let's get back to the tutorial. <clears throat> and now I want to save the voltage. Uh, and in ng-spice, we just say, okay, I want to save the current that is flowing in my V0 current sor uh, voltage source, and I want to save the voltage on my IBPS 5 micron node. So if I now run, let's see what the tutorial says. No, we should add some measurements first. So here, let's open the tran dot. Actually, let's keep that there. Let's open the tran.mess. Now, by the way, you can use any text editor you want. I'm using Doom Emacs. That's because I'm old. <laughs> and I, well, I, I started using Emacs over 20 years ago, I guess, and I, I haven't changed yet. Well, I guess sometimes I use VS Code, but mostly I use uh, Emacs because I like it and I, my, it's sort of stuck in my fingers. Um, but uh, I wouldn't, well, if you have a text editor that you like, whether it's code, whether it's Sublime, whether it's whatever it, whatever it is, um, just pick one and stick to it. Okay, so this measurement file I should maybe explain. So the way it works, and actually let's do make typical to run the simulation again. So what the CIC sum really does is it reads my test bench, the tran.spy, and it generates a, a new <laughs> test bench file. So let's do that, save that. So in the folder here, let me make a new terminal. In this output.tran, so that's the output from the tran test bench, it'll make a new Spice file. This is really what comes out of CIC sim. Now, the difference between the, the spice file that you see on the uh, right here and the one you see on the left is really that it's inserted the what we call the transistor corner. So which particular transistor are we do we want to simulate? Do we want to send it, simulate a typical transistor or a fast transistor or a slow transistor or whatever? That needs to be in there. And also the temperature and the voltage. And it has a couple of replacements. For example, in the tran.spy, you'll see this be the, there'll be this if def lay. So if I'm simulating on the layout file, I actually want to include this spice file. And but if I'm simulating on the spice file or the schematic, sorry, then I want to include this spice file. And in the output, you can see only one of them. So it sort of knows uh, which one to choose. And the reason it knows where, which one to choose is in the make file. So here, when you say make typical it will, first of all, it will always netlist. And then it'll run, you can actually see what it runs. So if we go back and actually let's go back here. 
make typical and we add an n and then you can see the commands it does instead so here is the actual sort of coc co uh, run command it runs on the transient test bench it'll give it runs schematic gt is just global stuff it runs the typical transistors typical temperature typical voltage so if i change this to be high voltage instead and of course that's defined somewhere what high voltage means it runs a new simulation and in the output file in the output directory now there will be a high spice file so it it does mean that it's entirely possible to, for me to go in here and rerun that simulation using energy spice. Okay, like this. Now I'm running energy spice directly. And I can even go in here. And I can do energy spice. And uh, let me see actually what the command was run in uh, because it probably adds a couple of yeah there's a bit more that runs let me just add that so it actually says what raw file what the raw file should be raw file is the output from uh, ngspice so where it stores the simulation so here we can see the raw file. Now, if you want to look at that file, we can do ng-spice, and you can do load, uh, transient, vh raw, and we can plot the vibps file my cramp. No search vector, why? ibps, am I typing it wrong? Yes, ibps, okay. Okay, so that's 600 mil something millivolt. That's one way to plot it. Uh, there's another way. And I'm not too fond. <laughs> um, well, the end spice thing is good, but as soon as you zoom, it opens on a new window. So I, I ended up writing my own with 6sim. In order to get this one to work, you actually have to have a Python TK installed. So it may not work for you. If it doesn't, then figure out how to install a Python TK. Uh, but this just has uh, a bit more flexibility when it comes to um, how you look at things. Right. So this is just the same thing. It, it's not really that interesting for these uh, simulations since we get the same value uh, for all time points. This oscillation that you see that comes from the uh, trapezoid uh, function used in Newton Rapson. Okay, but now I've run a typical simulation. One thing to note is when I run make typical, so <clears throat> it runs the simulation. There is actually an option which I thought I had enabled, but obviously I didn't. No, it is. Okay, so if we do make typical again, then it skips the simulation because no files has changed. But if I go to back to my transient test bench and <laughs> let's add a space, save it, run it again, it will rerun the simulation. The reason I made that is um, I can't always remember whether I've run the simulation or not. And sometimes with long simulations, it's a pain if it actually starts, if it's already run. So now it actually looks at all the input files and it generates a hash. So in here, there will be a typical SHA file. Let's just look at that. Well, it's not that easy to see there. Maybe to do it here. I'll put run, run, da, da, da. no, that's a raw file. <laughs> that has the simulations. That's not the one we want. We want the SHA file. Okay, so this has all the references that has been found in the Tran.spy, and it has a long hash, a SHA hash. Now, that is a unique representation of that particular file, which means that if you change anything, uh, then the SHA will change, and if it's not changed, then the SHA will be the same. So that means even though you write make typical, it will not always rerun the simulation. If you want to force it, then you add this no SHA option. Now, the reason I split up 
my test branches into a simulation part and a and a um, what was I going to say? Simulation part and a measurement part is quite often with long simulations. I don't want to rerun <laughs> the um, the simulation. I just want to rerun the measurements because maybe I had an error somewhere. Like for example, if I do tran mess here and let's actually introduce an error. So let me run run again. Now it should not run the simulation. It should run the measurement. And it says, okay, no sort of vector found. You don't want to do a, another week of simulation just because you want to fix this uh, number. So you want to separate the sort of extraction of parameters from the actual simulation itself. Huh? Did it update too soon? No shocks vector. Why does it say that? I might have found a bug. Yeah. Okay. So if it doesn't rerun for some reason, you can always add the no SHA. And in this case, I also added the no run option. So it doesn't really re redo uh, the simulation. Okay. So let's add a file actually open the tran.yaml file because when you run simulations you don't want to sit there and you look at the output results you kind of want them to be summarized somehow so the way i've chosen to do that is write a basically a python package that does that for me so let's do a no run here again and now you well you don't see it but it will write a uh, results directory since I added this YAML file where it extracts the two parameters, the current and the um, the gate source voltage. And I can open, now by the way, the open command only works on Mac, I think. There will be a HTML file that where it writes out the uh, simulation. And here also you'll get a pass fail kind of thing. So if I, for example, change the max to be 6.5, I think that actually is going to fail, and I rerun. Then I get here, and I open. You will see one of them turns red. So it's sort of a way to set in the specification for your design, and have that automatically generated. So we just did that. Uh, check the waveforms. I'll show you how to do that. So we can do that from here too. Look at the very interesting flat plot. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> the reason I don't do a GUI simulation in Xscheme is I want to run all corners. So I want to be able to write Make Typical, Extreme Test Connection, and Monte Carlo. And I just want to do that. And this uh, CIC sim will, or 6 sim will go away and run all those corners, generate all the different permutations of the SPICE files, run all the measurements, and everything's perfect, right? So while that simulation is running, what we're actually going to do is add a function to this Python file that is there in order to automatically uh, draw a plot. Okay, so I'm going to just copy, and that should have been written in Python. Let's just fix that. Let's see. Where did it go? <laughs> Run on corners. This is not YAML. This is Python. Okay. So I want to open my Python file, tran.py. So I want to remove this line. This Python file, so that actually also is found by CSC sim, and it will run after the simulation is completed. Because sometimes I've not been able to do everything I want to do in ND Spice. Sometimes I need more functions. And that's where Python comes in. So it actually takes the output from ND Spice, the stuff that get extracted here, the IBNS and so on, and you get them available, and you can do whatever you want in the Python file. Just as an example, I can add here plotting. So I'm importing CI system, which has some functions for plotting. And let's just see, okay, there's a typo here too. 
it should be fine my cramps and actually I don't want to save it right now because the simulation is still running uh, but I want to fix it here and we want five micrograms there and that's when I can save okay and as you can see now the simulation is still running so it actually takes quite a while to run all the corners and I'm running on a MacBook Pro well okay I'm capturing my videos at the same time now but it actually takes a bit of time. As of yet, I have not added any um, functions to do uh, to CIC sim to do sort of forking and uh, running on multiple servers at the, at the same time because I don't have a server grid at home. <laughs> <clears throat> but let's let's just wait for that simulation to complete and then we'll see what happens when I run this uh, Python code. We're at 18, there's 10 more simulations. <laughs> yeah. One other thing that you need to do if you don't have it already is install Pandoc. So if I, Pandoc, and this is a very useful program. This is a Pandoc version. Oh, version that can take in pretty much any text format and then output pretty much at any text format. Really, really useful. And I use that to, for example, convert Markdown to HTML. So Markdown is a lot, Markdown is a lot easier to write for a human. That's what's in the readme file, uh, while HTML files are much easier to look at. <laughs> so, okay, two more simulations and then we're done. Good. So now I can go back to my uh, tran.py and I can save that. And if I then run again, actually that should have been a bash. Let's just fix that and it's not YAML, it's bash. And I run, now Now I really wanna run with the no run option, right? I don't wanna run the simulations again. They've already have, they already have run. And it'll take another few minutes if I actually accidentally run them. So I wanna run no run, which runs the extraction and it runs the Python. And now you can see it's actually generating plot files for all of these um, simulations. So here I'm plotting both the uh, five mark ramp and the uh, current. So the voltage on the gate and the uh, current in the uh, voltage source. So if we look in the output directory now, actually I'll just do PNG and let's just look at the file names. There'll be a lot of uh, images and let's just open one of them so you can understand, see what I mean. Now, I'm not saying you want to actually make images for every single uh, simulation, but it's just to demonstrate how the Python file could be used in order to generate images. Actually, let's delete the output tran. Was that a good idea? Probably not, doesn't matter, I can regenerate. What I wanna do now is make a summary. Now, there's gonna be a summary YAML that takes all the typical simulations and then generates a summary. Uh, you probably want to update the description. So this is a current mirror. And, uh, oh, well, something like that. Make summary. And this generates a readme file. And let's do pandoc. This is converting the readme file into an HTML and the read HTML I can open. And this generates sort of a summary of the specs. Okay. So now we're done with uh, the results. We kind of proven, actually, <laughs> let's look at the results maybe. So first of all, we can see that we're sending five microamps in. We can't see that, but we know that. And we're getting roughly 20 out. We don't get exactly 20 out. That's because, well, the voltage on the drain is not the same and when we introduce Monte Carlo, we actually do not get 20 uh, microns out. So here we have mismatch between the two transistors. 
and you can modify it, you can make it bigger and so on. But what, what we want to say now is, okay, we have a good enough current mirror. Now we want to do the layout. So let's do that. Let's uh, actually, let's go to the work directory. So temp at ASX IP and it's Janeway example there and work. Let's clear the screen and let's open the magic file. <clears throat> okay, in this magic file now, there's not gonna be anything, right? This is a completely empty magic file. So we have the terminal there and we have that one, yeah. So the first thing we need to do is, well, you should read up on the documentation on magic. Uh, I have made a, on my GitHub page, a, uh, well, a version of the documentation from magic that has all the commands and so on. So I encourage you to have a look at that. But let's just go through a few things. We do V to view all, zoom in, zoom out, shift Z, Z. Uh, if you wanna look inside the box, well, you don't really need to know that what that is yet, uh, but let's actually set up a few things. Let's go to, let's see, what do I wanna do? I wanna set the grid to 0 0.1 and I want to turn the grid on, and I want to snap the grid like that. So now I have a design grid, and I want to insert my transistors. Cell place is inst. So you can do uh, cell place instance, and we can navigate to our design directory, the ATR, and we need to select the same transistor, which is this 4C5F. Okay, so now I have one of those transistors. Actually, let's make the grid a bit bigger. And now we wanna turn off snap the grid. Actually, let's turn off the grid. <laughs> okay, this is the tedious part of layout. I haven't figured out a good way to do this. But what you need to do is you need to hover across the transistor, you need to press S, and then you need to copy it. Okay, so now I copied one transistor. But there's no way to sort of see whether they overlap correctly. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm zooming in and let me go a bit bigger screen. And first of all, I can place them so they're exactly aligned in that direction. And I think I want it around here. So <clears throat> let's select the bottom one and let's press X. And let's... Uh, So let's select the top one. So what I did now was Shift X to unselect or to unexpand. So I know that if I align these two transistors so that this black line is pretty much exactly on top of that one, and if I then expand it, it'll work fine. <laughs> So I need to take those, let's select both of them and let's copy them. No, that was wrong. Undo, okay. Let's uh, shift like that, select, uh, shift. Is it shift or control? So let's dissect that then. Copy. Yeah, that got me both. Okay, I need to move them up. So this is a bit finicky. If you know a better way to do this, some like array placement or anything like that, then please let me know because this is the most tedious part of the, what I'm doing now is actually shift and the arrow keys. So I've added the ability to press shift and then if you press the arrow keys, it will actually uh, move stuff for you. So let's expand this one again so I can see what I'm doing and select that and select that. And then if I do again what I said and align this black line roughly in the middle here. And now I need to select my top line and copy it and place it so it's Now I'm just navigating with the arrow keys without shift and yeah, that looks okay. And uh, let's expand X, select the top transistor, 
move it down until these align. And if you observe at the top of the screen, there will be a small thing called DRC errors. As long as that's green, then you're usually okay. Okay, so now I've added five transistors. So the nice thing about these uh, transistors I like to use is that <laughs> they overlap. So uh, the blue things on the sides here, that is the box. And then we have the transistor gates. Let me zoom in, control Z. This is the transistor gate. The green part is the actual diffusion. You have the drain in the middle. You have the source on the sides. And you can see I've already added metal in order to connect up in the hierarchy. And uh, yep, yeah. okay. So now we have a transistors. Let's make sure we save it because I don't want to do that again. <clears throat> okay, at our ground. Okay, it's a good idea to maybe not look at everything here. So if I do C, no star, and C, actually, let me just copy what's on the screen. Uh, copy this part. And then I don't need to look at all layers. I get look at some of the layers. And so now I want to change the grid to 0 0.5. I want to turn the grid on. I want to snap the grid uh, because then it's easier to select the box. I can place my cursor over here, press my left mouse button, place the cursor over here, for example, place the right mouse button, and then I need to find my metal, or local eye, and I can place the uh, press the middle mouse button. That will paint that uh, part of the design. Now I can press spacebar to go into the routing commands, and I can easily route down. So now you press left mouse button to sort of start the route and you press right mouse button to end the route. And now we have a ground. This is, should be connected ground. So let's go back and now we want to route the gates. Same thing while in wire mode. Now I know that all of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have five transistors. All of them shall have the same gate. So I can just start there, press there, and now all of those are connected. Yay, done. And drain of M2, okay. M2, so this M2, I think I meant the input transistor. So if I go back to my schematic, this one has the drain connected to gate. So let's use the middle transistor for that. And then I need to press here. And now I want to press shift, go up. Actually, I don't wanna do it there undo. <laughs> I want to press there, go up, because now, let's see, huh? go up, and now I'm routing in M3, press my left mouse button and shift, and then right mouse button to go down again. And then I can press my right mouse button to end the route. So now I've connected my gate to my drain. And let's save. Okay. And add labels. Oh, uh, yeah, and then I need to route the drain. So let's do that in M2. Actually, let's do that with a box. So let's select, for example, here. Start there and end somewhere. Well, maybe that's too close. and end up here, and let's paint that with metal one. And in a similar manner, I can now shift to the routing tool. Okay, what happened now? Shift to routing. No, it doesn't select the right. Uh, let's go from here then, and just connect out. Sometimes the routing tool is a bit finicky to sort of choose the right uh, the rectangles and so on. Uh, but you'll figure it out. You get used to it. Magic is actually very good when it comes to routing. Now, I think I did something stupid. Yes, I did. Um, because I don't want to connect this one to... Um, I don't want to connect the, this transistor to my drains. So let's select that box and delete that box. And we need to extend this one again then. 
Mm. Uh, box two is there, like that, and that, and let's just paint that metal on. Okay, good. Save that. Okay, add labels. Yes, I need labels. So, let's select a rectangle on the drains. That one, for example, and then edit text. And here I want to have a porch, and it should be called IBNS 20 microamp. And apply. Okay, and now I want to select my input. So that's this one, and that's IBPS. IBPS uh, 5 microamp. Add that. And all the way down, I need to also add uh, ground. So that's going to be, what did I call it? What is a VSS? I think so. Apply. Okay. So now I've added my ports. Okay. So the next thing I need to do, now I need to check whether my layout, and I think it should be complete now, whether it actually matches my schematic. So then I go back to my terminal and I do make uh, CDL, that writes the netlist for uh, layout versus schematic, and LVS. And let's cross our fingers and... Oh, it's incorrect. Okay, so what's wrong? Hmm, no matching net. IBNS. Okay, so what's wrong here? Let's have a look at it. So it says here in my... So there's a source that is not connected. Ah, yes, I forgot to connect the source. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, I have forgotten to connect the sources to uh, the ground. So then we need to press there and we need to route all the way down. And let's zoom in. Zoom in here, if I press there, and I go down, no, that's up, down was right, right mouse button, okay, so now I connected all the sources to ground, save again, yay, now it's correct, perfect, our layout is done, excellent, so let's go back here and extract the parasitics, make a layout parasitics, uh, this extracts the uh, netlist that includes all the capacitances that we can now extract from the layout. And here you'll see a bunch of capacitors. And we want to now simulate with those uh, additional capacitances. And let's go simulation, Janeway, okay. And what do I want here? I want to change to layout. So then I just change this command here to lay. So everything should be described in the, in the tutorial if, I'm, if you think I'm going a bit too fast. Make typical. Okay, so now it's running the typical simulation. And I wanna add the typical results to the summary file. So here it has the layout typical, it has the uh, ATC. Actually, let's make a modification to run this a bit faster. Instead of uh, 30 Monte Carlo corners, let's just run 10 and do make uh, typical ETC Monte Carlo and start that simulation. And okay. So one of the things that we also kind of want to do is we want to set up a simulation that is a good representation of a typical simulation. <laughs> so that's this test part. So if you write make test, then it should run a quite fast simulation just to check that everything works. So if I go to the info file that we looked at earlier, that has an option for simulation. And if I now add Janeway X like this, and I say make, actually, let's just say use make typical. Now, 
when I run my stuff on GitHub now, it will actually run the typical simulation on the GitHub workflows and show the results there. So you shouldn't run all the simulations because it's simply too many, it takes too long, the GitHub servers are not that fast. But if you actually had your own what's called runners or your own servers, then you could um, add, uh, well, run everything on GitHub when you commit it, like export the multiple simulations and so on. So while that is running, let's also add some documentation in the design directory there will be a markdown file and a markdown file is simply a text file and I can just say current mirror. This is a simple current mirror. Hey, okay. So I also have this GitHub uh, workflow that generates documentation. We'll have a look at that afterwards. So I've already set up quite a bit on what's in the YAML file and uh, you can see that this is still running. Uh, but let actually let's actually um, go to right, let's see. So now we've run everything. We need to add the layout that we made. Magic. And actually that's the only one we kind of want to add. Uh, what else do I need to do? I need to commit it, of course. Before I push it, let's go and have a look at, uh, see if the pages have been generated. So, manage parallel requests. So something has failed. Ah, okay. There is a miss missing command. Right, fine. Uh, there should have been a GitHub. Okay. Uh, that's why I'm doing this tutorial. <laughs> to make sure that it actually runs, right? So I need to have a um, uh, GitHub. So I think in a tutorial, if we go to that tutorial, where is it? There we go. No, it doesn't have the GitHub either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, I'll fix that. Let's fix that right away. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, now the simulation is done. Uh, make summary again. And we can run our pondoc command. Uh, what was that? This one. Open readme. And now you can see that we also have the layout simulations in here. But let's get this GitHub thing working. So, uh, git branch. No, let's do git push. So now I'm pushing all my local changes to the um, GitHub. And if I go to the GitHub directory, let's see, where is it? Okay. Yeah, here we can see the status. That's kind of what I want. Now the doc should have been also failing, but anyway. Let's see, we want to go to main. No, develop, sorry. And on develop, we 
has two co one commit behind main really one commit behind really okay uh, open pull request able to merge oh i should have added a nice description now i think i'm done in this whole thing a merge pull request confirm merge i would recommend that you actually do pull requests uh, because then you can work on develop, you can commit and so on, and you can only run the actions when you do stuff. Let's let's see if everything works now. So we saw earlier that when we ran, oh well, that's wrong. Uh, when we ran the LVS and so on, then it didn't do much. It just looked like this. So everything was failing except for documentation, which should have been failing. <laughs> and let's see what happens now. So it's building the doc still. Let's do get the other actions. And let's just wait a bit, I guess. What can we do in the meantime? Um, yeah, so schematic. Spend some time on your schematics. Try to make them pretty. It actually matters. So it's a good idea to add notes, add comments, and so on. For layout, there's not much information you can add. Uh, anything in the layout uh, needs to be something that uh, Magic knows about and that can be streamed out. Uh, I think... Oh. No? Let's save it. But it was correct, so uh, it should be okay. Yeah, one, maybe one thing. Oh. Okay. So, simulation didn't fail. Interesting. Ah, could there be? Yes, there is. Okay. Um, okay, I'll, I'll fix. <laughs> I'll fix this in IP. But uh, the reason everything failed now is that uh, there's a link to the technology library in uh, this example, and it has the wrong name. It shouldn't be a big A at the end here. So let's just fix that. Uh, let's, actually, and let's just. Uh, Check out main. Oh, that's just a time step. We can ignore it. Did you see what I did now? I actually ran a git diff on the magic file. And I can see that the only thing that's different in the file is the timestamp. Now I don't need to update that. So let's just check out main. And uh, let them make a new, and then we want uh, tech uh, A. Like that. And I need to update that in the IP template. Yeah, what do you know? So it turns out that uh, on, Mad, Mad, <laughs> on Mac it's fine to have a big A, small A, but on Linux it's not. So let's push a new version of the libraries. And we need to pull, I guess. Uh, shouldn't be anything that is uh, problematic here. Let's just push it. Okay, and let's just go. We should have gotten some documentation now. A really good thing I ran through this. So if I open this one, yes, here we go. So now uh, the documentation ha uh, thing has run. Uh, it has, it has, um, 
generate the documentation. And what's nice about the documentation is, well, now it doesn't look that good because that tech tech uh, link is wrong, but it, it'll soon update. Uh, and well, layout doesn't have anything. But while we're looking at that, we can actually fix the readme. And we need a space there, and we need a space there, and we need a space there. That should make them work. And then I need to update the template also to uh, add a line shift, and a one there, and one there. So you don't actually have to do that. Okay. So let's see, are the actions completed? Hey, now we're talking. Now we can see the GDS is okay, the DRC is okay, the SIM is okay, the LVS is okay, and the doc's still running. So <clears throat> that's really good. Uh, this will take a moment to update. I think actually this is because I'm running Safari and these are images. And quite often, Safari doesn't update images. They cache images, and they don't update them if they don't have to. Uh, but if I open Chrome, then they do update. So that, that's a bit annoying thing with Safari. There's probably uh, some way to turn it off, but uh, I don't know how. But let me om open the same page in Chrome. And there we should see, yes, now they're all green. So when you get to this point on the project with the temperature sensor and you have all green, well, that means you get points. If I now go to the documentation page, uh, we can, oh, actually that didn't work. Let's see if that action is done. Yes, that's completed which means that the schematics should also be now in the schematics. Yes, it is. And you can also notice that that uh, comment we added, this is a simple current mirror, that's now added to the documentation, so it generates the documentation automatically. And last but not least, it generates a 3D model and uh, it leeches off the tiny tape out 3D viewer in order to be able to see our, the design that we just made in 3D. So I'll put the description or the link to the tutorial below. Uh, Hopefully you find it useful, and definitely if you're a student of mine, then you have to use it. You have no choice, so just get it done. Okay, have a fantastic day.